uh, the Borgia Popes. Well, I remember uh, of the Spaniards of the pre uh, Reformation period, not terribly nice people. Uh, I remember a wonderful National Geographic coffee table book on the Vatican that was published maybe 15 years ago. And in it, an elderly priest uh, has a wonderful line. Uh, I forget his name. Maybe he wasn't named. Uh, he said, God has, very be God has been very kind to us. We haven't had a wicked pope in 500 years. I, I think that's about right, which is not a bad run for any uh, institution. Certainly the corruptions of the late medieval papacy, particularly its corruptions with political power. I mean, being Americans, we tend to focus on sex and money. Uh, the, the really corrupting, uh, religiously corrupting aspects of the most difficult period in the history of the papacy had to do with the church's entanglement with state power. And, and this is one of the great uh, turning points of uh, the second millennium is at the end of the second millennium with the Declaration on Religious Freedom of the Second Vatican Council, the highest authority of the Catholic Church saying the state is incompetent in theological questions. We are not going to put state power behind the truth claims, of the, the specifically theological truth claims of the Catholic Church. We're not going to use the state as a platform from which to evangelize. This ends a 1,700-year period of history that begins with Constantine. And if, to vary the image, the normal image, suppose we're the early church. Suppose the early church is not Richard Burton and Gene Simmons going off to get executed uh, in Rome in the movie. Suppose this is the early church. Suppose 20,000 years from now, they're looking back on 2008. I think we might see 1965, uh, Dignitatis Humanae, the Latin title of the Second Vatican Council's Declaration of Religious Freedom, as the end of a 1,700-year Babylonian captivity for the Catholic Church, in which its alignment with state power, uh, while having some benefits, was essentially not a good idea, and was... Uh, uh, put behind the church, thus freeing the Catholic Church to be the great institutional defender of human rights and the religious freedom of all that John Paul II was. A couple emails.